That's the result of a collision between neutrino and matter in the ice, typically, typically the ice itself, nucleus. So over here, I'm Jim Haugen, I'm the instrumentation manager for IceCube. This is Dennis Dooling, our drilling manager. Uh, Tom Hutchings, our on-ice lead. And Mark Krasberg, our senior scientist on station right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around here at drill camp. Uh, and, what, and the drilling is using hot water. So we're on ice, the ice, if we go all the way down to bedrock, it's 2.8 kilometers. So for us to drill these holes like this, two and a half kilometers deep, we do it in a fairly straightforward manner. We use pressurized hot water and melt the ice. And then form a big loop, recirculating loop, repressurize, reheat, and then just keep drilling and, and drilling until we're done. It takes us approximately uh, 24 hours to go down. Yep, 24 hours down, six hours up. So, so this is the camp. It stays here all season long, it's where we make the water. And on the back side, where you guys took that little roundabout, where we'll be going back to the tower, where the actual drilling is occurring. This in, this entire field. If you see all these flags, you see flags in front. When you were out at the South Pole Telescope, you saw flags behind, flags all over here. Those are all ice cube holes that have been... Uh, so with that, Dennis is going to take you around the camp, and then we're going to go up to the tower, we'll get a chance to look down one of these holes, and we'll go from there. So Dennis, you're up. We're at the University of Wisconsin. And that's who runs this drill, so. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going this way. All right, be careful right here. Let's see the ice in there. I'm meaner. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him. <laughs> we'll just let it happen, man. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so when, when I talked about what these holes, you can actually see uh, as we have a deep array, we also put an array of these detector modules at the surface, which we call ice top. So you see these little white things popping out of the surface. Very near each one of those is an ice cube hole. So we actually have a surface array. And we're actually, the hole we're drilling is over there, and you can see the tower. You can see what looks to be like the world's largest garden hose reel. That contains that two and a half kilometers of hose that we're moving the water through along with the drill cable. So what you see here is the return water line and the supply water goes out there. So what Dennis is going to be showing you from the back over here is we have a high pressure pump building and we have four heater buildings and in each one of these heater buildings are nine heaters. So we pressurize, heat the water, it goes out the supply line, rings around the hose, up over the tower, down through the drill head and then that's what we're doing. We put a pump at the top of the hole so that we collect the water and we return it and do it again. So we just have a big giant loop established. We can only drill, uh, we all get here in early November. We leave in early February. It's a very limited season. So, basically, it equates to like a Burlington locomotive amount of power going out a three quarter inch hole. And that's the reason we can drill such a hole in such a time frame. Power of the locomotive coming out of the size of Yes. Yes, and it's uh, hot water, it's a thousand pounds. <laughs> Pressure, 200 gallons a minute at about 90 C, and that, that equates out to about 6,300 volts. And that thing just drills right through the ice. Jets right through it, melts it, and jets it out of the way. About two meters a minute going down, uh, which is pretty fast. And uh, like I said, it's the only thing of its kind around. And, uh, One more time. Mark Krasberg. Okay. At University of Wisconsin. Okay. So, uh, as Jim said, so this is like a $270 million telescope, okay? And it's a neutrino telescope. And it's called Ice Cube because it's a kilometer high of, of we're instrumenting a kilometer high of ice from one and a half kilometers to two and a half kilometers, and it's over a square kilometer of ice. So it's a cubic, we're instrumenting a cubic kilometer of ice. Okay, now, uh, let's see, why neutrino telescope? So every time humans have built different types of telescopes, starting with, say, visible light telescopes, and then say higher energy telescopes, microwave telescopes, gamma ray telescopes, every time they've done that, they've uncovered a new understanding of the universe. Okay? And they've also discovered things they never ever dreamed were out there. Every time that that's that they built a new type of telescope. And you can imagine like you take a picture of a person and then you take a picture of the person, say with infrared, or you take a picture of the person with microwaves, and you'd learn a whole lot about the person that you didn't know before. Okay, we're taking a picture of the universe or, or we're taking a picture of the universe with neutrinos. And we basically make a, a map of the universe.
universe using using a particle called a neutrino, and we're hoping to find something that no one could have ever predicted. Okay, people know these these high energy particles are out there, but no one knows where they come from. Uh, you're holding it like this, or we got the strap on, because whatever goes down here, it ain't ever coming back. Uh, but if you come over and you want to, you know, take a look. I got the I got the light here, but you can hold your hand on this hose. This is the actual drilling. So going through here, this is 88 degrees C. You can put your bare hand on it to feel the warmth. 200 gallons a minute. Uh, at this point, it's probably maybe eight, nine hundred pounds per square inch. So all that water is now is going coming out a nozzle, to basically the size of your thumb. Uh, and then this is the, this hose here is attached to the return water pump, uh, which is uh, you can actually see the water down there. And then that's establishing the entire loop. So if you take a look, so you can grab it. But just be very ginger. Come carefully. I'm gonna come on Res your all's left. Respect the hole. Well, and that's. that's right. Wait, what? Uh, who's in the control room there, Mark? Misty. Hey, Misty. This one of the holes. How, Misty, how deep are we now? We're at about 1440. So, so this is the top 50 meters. Another, there's another 1400 meters underneath that, and then we have another kilometer. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot some video. Can I get one last video shot here? Oh yeah, sure. Let me uh, cut this. As a journalist, I don't expect my writing to last more than about 24 well, hours. No, I think about that too. Yeah. The, the time scales of tens of thousands of years are a little bit hard to actually imagine in the great scheme of things. Uh, 